In this video, we'll do a short walkthrough of the latter third of the leastsquares.r script that we got started on in class today. Uh, the idea here is to fit a polynomial regression model to the GDP growth data set using life expectancy as a predictor, just to give you a sense of the mechanics of how polynomial regression works in R. Uh, you'll soon see that even though a polynomial regression model is a nonlinear model, it can still be fit using the trick of linear least squares. Uh, it sounds a bit like a contradiction, and we'll see why it's not uh, in just a moment. Let's do the mechanics in R first. First thing always to do here is to import the data set. This one lives in a text file on my hard drive. Uh, you should have downloaded it from the class website. And here it is. Click open. Uh, one annoying thing about this data set, for whatever reason, R doesn't seem to register that there's a header row at the beginning. Uh, and so you just have to tell it, yes, there is a heading. These are variable codes rather than that row being a variable itself. OK. Click import. And now we've got this data set available to play with. Here it is. Just keep in mind this outcome variable here, GR6096, that's the annualized GDP growth rate between 1960 and 1996. Uh, here it's just a percentage expressed as a decimal. So, you know, plus 2.7%, plus 2.7%, minus 1%, etc. First thing we learned to do in class today was to fit simple linear models by least squares, and uh, we'll just go through that mechanics, uh, just go through these mechanics just to give you a sense of, of a little bit of practice here. So we'll plot the data set. Here it is down here. We will fit a linear model for economic growth rate as predicted by life expectancy. Uh, here, this is uh, measured in simply years of life expectancy at birth. Uh, so a country here is a life expectancy of 35, out here is 70, uh, and, and there's clearly a positive trend. So we fit the linear model. We superimpose the line onto the plot, zoom in here a little bit to give you a, a better view of it, uh, and there's the fit to the data. One thing you might immediately criticize about this model uh, is that straight line doesn't look like a particularly sensible description of what's going on here. There's sort of this clear up steeply in the beginning and then a much more shallow uh, trajectory right here. And the, of course, the line just has one slope throughout the entire course of the x variable here. So uh, you could pretty easily argue on the basis of just exploratory analysis here that what you need is a, a function, a y versus x function here that's going to go a little bit more steeply here and then level off. Uh, and a natural candidate, a natural kind of model that fits that description is a quadratic model. Uh, you can imagine that a parabola has exactly that characteristic. It goes up steeply and then it levels off. And of course, eventually it's going to turn around again. Uh, we're not so interested uh, in its turning around. What we care about is capturing that leveling off effect. Uh, this is not to say that a quadratic regression model is the best thing to do here at all, uh, but it's certainly a sensible thing if you want to capture that leveling off. Very simple to do in R, uh, and the way to do it is to simply, as we mentioned briefly in class today, add a quadratic term uh, inside the LM function. Okay, and mathematically, this is regressing y on life 60 and life 60 squared. Okay, so let's, uh, let's get a fresh plot here. Let's fit this model, and let's uh, briefly extract the coefficients. Uh, I called it lm.life60.quad for a quadratic regression model. And now we've got three terms here. We've got an intercept, we've got a linear term, and we've got a quadratic term. Okay, so that, that all parabolas can be described uh, by, the, by one of some combination of those three numbers, constant term, the linear term, the quadratic term, and here are the estimated values from the least, the, the least squares procedure. Now we can add the fitted values to, the, to the, uh, the plot over here. It's not so simple as feeding something to the AB line command, because again, this isn't a line. We've got fitted values from the regression model. Uh, and so the easy way to do that, uh, one way that I could do that very simply is the points function. Uh, simply plot a whole bunch of x, y points where the x values are the original predictor variables, the y points are the fitted values in the regression model, and just to give them uh, some visual distinction here, I'll change them to solid circles and a color of blue. And there they are, superimposed on top of the plot. Here we are zoomed in, and you can see there's the quadratic equation that we fit. And, and if you wished, you could interpolate between values that you haven't observed uh, and it's very clearly capturing the steep rise in the beginning, the leveling off, uh, and in fact it's doing something we, we don't really want, which is to kind of turn around before the end of the data set. That's giving you a sense of the limitations of polynomial regression, uh, and I would encourage you to think about these kind of endpoint effects even more carefully when you look at the ethanol data set, uh, and when you do a polynomial regression model for that data set on your exercises. Okay. Now, it may seem, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, like something of a contradiction to fit a nonlinear model by the technique of linear least squares. So 
How do we do that? Very simply, in math, this is the original model we would like to fit. We want to describe y, our outcome variable here. That really should have a subscript. That's a bit of sloppy notation on my part. But yi is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi plus beta 2 xi squared. Any parabola can, can be described by that equation right there. And of course, we've always got residuals in any kind of statistical model. Well, the key to seeing this as a really a linear equation is to define some new variable zi here. We notice this is now a linear equation in two variables, xi and zi. Uh, but if I say that the zi's happen to take on the values xi squared, well, I've recovered the original equation up here. And so you can see that this thing that is quadratic in xi is linear in the basis defined by xi and xi squared. It's a very simple trick of turning a polynomial regression model into a linear regression model, just linear in, in a transform x. Uh, in this case, the transformation is not some of the ones we've worked with before, like log transformations, uh, but it's simply adding a power.